Welcome back, my friends. Just a brief video to tell you that you shouldn't eat hot food, spicy food, negatively pranic food. This is something that I'm learning and investigating for myself. So the thoughts that I'm going to share with you here today are as a result of me eating spicy food today. I ate spicy food. Why? Because I'm in India and there's this restaurant here next to the Ishi Yoga Center and there's a long list and I'm like, okay, let's see what I don't know anything what it's called. So the first time that I ever came and I just instantaneously saw some thing and it's like veneer rice or something like this. And I'm like, yeah, this, this is what I need to get uh, because I know how my subconscious mind works. So I got this and it was perfect. Okay, no spice, no nothing. And I ate it with just rice and some vegetables. It was great. Second time I ate something, it was great. Third time today, I ordered something again. I just saw what, what whatever is on the list and I ordered something called paneer I, I have no idea paneer dosam uh, paneer something something three words okay and it's like this pancake and inside the pancake there's a uh, tofu mixed with some nice delicious stuff and the pancake is nice and crispy and there's a uh, little green stuff which I have no idea what it is but it's delicious and then there's some white stuff on the side it's also maybe like cottage cheese or some kind of cheese. Also great. I ate that, by the way. I'm not a vegan today. And I just felt what's well, calling me, the list, okay, I need to eat. And that's the first thing that came to my mind. That's the first thing that my subconscious said, yes, do it, eat it. And I ordered it. And I ate it and it was tasty, like literally 10 out of 10. All the food here, especially here in the yoga center, it's like 10 out of 10. Things that I've ordered in the restaurant, 10 out of 10. You can't say oh this thing was a bit uh, it's one it's like the most delicious food in the world maybe it's not maybe it doesn't uh, it maybe it's not your taste particularly but you can't say anything wrong about the food it's just made to perfection it made to perfection it's made by conscious people it's made in a sanctity uh, in the environment uh, is sacred and they have pictures of the isha yoga center the Dhyanalinga, Sadguru, and Sadguru's in the kitchen meaning the gigantic picture of him in the kitchen uh, so people there know what they're doing and they're making the most delicious food in the world. I don't know how they, they do it, but it's delicious. So I'm eating this and I'm like, oh my God, this is delicious. And I need to get one more, definitely. I can't just eat one plate, I ordered another one. So I ate two and it was spicy, okay? And they had a little spice on the side too because God forbid you don't get enough spice in the paneer, you have to get a little bit of spice extra. And there was spice also in the sauce, I forgot to mention. There's a little bit of sauce, like a bucket of sauce or a little bowl of sauce, also very spicy. And I'm eating this, it's delicious, but as I'm feeling the taste buds, I'm a little bit uh, in conflict with my mind because I know negative chronic food is not good and spicy food is not good. And then I thought to myself, well, why isn't it good? I need to really examine this. Is it really negative chronic? And what does this word negative chronic mean? So I sat down quietly, I ate my food and I left. I sat down quietly, just meditated for a while and figured out what was happening. Then I went to the, to the Adi Yogi right here. And I sat in this temple again. I sit here often. And I'm sitting there next to the 600 kilogram lingam. And I'm sitting alongside seven subterishis or seven sages that took uh, Shiva's knowledge across the planet. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, why is this called negative chronic? I'm sorry for the wind, by the way. So why, uh, why is it called negative pranic? So I'm sitting there and um, and then I look at the one of the Saptarishis, the seven sages. It's a model of them. They're made out of stone, carbon stone. And instantly I got it. So the first thing I realized after I ate the food is that spicy food is a nervous stimulant. This is why you shouldn't eat it. It stimulates your nervous system. What does that mean? It means something very specific and I'm going to explain to you what it is. You see, when you eat a fruit or a vegetable, it gives you energy. It actually gives you energy. It gives you something that your body can use as fuel and it, it, you have aliveness, you have energy and you go and do things in the world. A stimulant, a nervous stimulant especially, is, well I mean there aren't really any other kinds of stimulants except nervous stimulants. So something that stimulates you, it doesn't give you energy, it just stimulates whatever's inside. So it's like you have a fire, right? If you add wood to the fire, that gives it energy and it makes it bigger. But if you take a stick and you just hit it with the fire, it doesn't necessarily give it any energy. It just kind of stimulates it a little bit. And then you'll notice that the flame kind of dies down afterwards because if, if the wood is already uh, burnt up, 
because you're not doing anything, you're not adding anything. So it's exactly what a nervous stimulant does. Uh, spicy food, it just stimulates your nervous system. So what it means is, what this means is, if you wake up in the morning and you eat a hot chili pepper, forget about going back to sleep for another one or two hours for sure. Especially if it's hot enough, forget it, okay? You're not going to sleep. If you eat something, let's say you're extremely tired, you have a full days of work, and you, and literally the next second that you hit the pillow, you're gonna be dead. If you eat one of the world's hottest peppers or something a little bit below the list, you're not going to sleep for me for the, guarantee at least one or two hours, but probably five hours or more. Or more. Why? Because it stimulates your nervous system so heavily. Uh, that's what it does. What does that also do? What also stimulates your nervous system? Coffee, okay? This is why you shouldn't drink coffee either, but that's a different topic. I made lots of videos about coffee. You should search up my channel, Coffee, and I was very animated and expressive. Why? Because billions of people who drink coffee, and then uh, they get wired. Stimulate their nervous system. Not wise, not smart. So that's the first reason why you shouldn't eat spicy food because it stimulates your nervous system. Second reason why you shouldn't eat spicy food is because it's a negative pranic food. I didn't really know what this was. As I was walking to the Adiyogi statue, I'm thinking, what is a negative pranic? What does that mean, negative pranic? And then as I was kind of investigating, I realized, ah, because actually it, it takes away your prana. It's so damaging in itself that it breaks down whatever is happening inside of you and it releases the positive energy. By the way, the most positive product that I've ever eaten uh, food-wise is um, ash gourd. Okay, ash gourd is just fantastic. It's one of the best food on planet Earth. It's the, the most potent pranic food on planet Earth. If you eat this uh, ash gourd, I mean, it's like you don't have to do any kind of psychedelic uh, substance or you don't have to go to any kind of retreat or you don't really have to even meditate. You just eat a lot of this <laughs> and you'll be like, You'll be like having a spiritual experience. You'll be meditative forcefully. This food will make you spiritual, okay? It's just fantastic, it's fantastic. It gives you so much energy. Not energy in the way like you think coffee or Red Bull. No, not like this, that's just poison. Uh, but actual energy, prana, life, light. It's, it's amazing. I still don't fully understand this, so I'm a little bit uh, gentle in where, I, where I'm stepping because I haven't explored this topic fully. All I know for certain is that it simulates, simulates a nervous system and it doesn't feel good. So next is, uh, you know, that it's a negative pranic, it takes away your prana. And thirdly, why does it take away your prana? I actually got this as I was sitting next to the, uh, in the temple here and looking at the Saptarishis. I instantly understood, like it came to me, or they told me, you could say, energetically. I just felt this as I was looking at their bodies, like if they were to eat spicy foods. It's because it damages your body, it damages your system. It's a damaging food. You're eating a damaging food. Hey, why are you eating a damaging food? I don't know. Why? It's plus 38 degrees in this country. And people, it's not hot enough for them. They want to enjoy, uh, enjoy chilies and spicy food and make themselves even hotter and swell, sweat even more profusely. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's a culture or maybe it's all hot countries are like this. I think it is because uh, from my memory, every place that you visit, whether that be Thailand or India or um, even like Jamaica or various places like this, they all love spicy foods. They can't live without it. I don't know. When you go further north on the planet and when it cold, colder it gets, it's like, no, 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 I don't really particularly like spice. So the most intensely hot countries, yeah, give me all the spice in the world. I'm not hot enough in here. It's plus 46 and I'm sweating, I'm nearly dead. No, 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 give me the spice. Give me the chili, chili, jalapeno. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Let's guzzle it down. Makes no sense to me. But anyways, I'm not complaining. Uh, I like spicy food too. Not really, not really. I actually don't. It tastes nice food, but the consequences to the body are quite severe. So I ate this. They're not severe enough that they're gonna. I'm gonna experience some very bad thing. I did experience. Oh, this is a little bit unpleasant and unwise for me to eat this uh, more. Maybe tomorrow. I shouldn't eat this every day. But I experimented it with it. And why did I do this? Because my friends, today I'm going up this hill, the seventh hill. If everything goes to plan and I don't chicken out because I'm gonna go when the sun uh, goes down, that's gonna be in a couple of hours. And I'm already kind of tired and exhausted, so hopefully I don't uh, again chicken out. And I'm gonna walk up to the top. I'll make sure to record a video. So the next couple of videos you'll see is me going up there. And this, you know, I'm just doing things and things are coming to my attention and to my experience. And this is a, a relatively positive thing that came to my experience. Why? Because I got to stimulate my nervous system. And that's not a bad thing in specific contexts. 
So I stimulated my nervous system and uh, this will give me the necessary kind of, I don't know, inner experience to be able to go and do this. So it gave me a certain kind of strength, a little bit of strength. So I want to get back to this topic or in this point of uh, damages your system. It does damage your system. So you can imagine eating a spicy chili. You may think, oh no, it doesn't. It does, okay? Imagine giving a little chili to a little baby. Hey, little baby, don't worry, it doesn't damage your system. No, it'll be very painful for him and probably it'll lead to some consequences. Similarly with you, but you're growing up and you think you're whatever, spicy food is healthy. It's not healthy. It's healthy if you're sick and you want to kill whatever's inside of you. It's healthy if you're, again, sick with a cold or something, you need the temperature to rise. Or maybe you're really tired and you need some little bit of stimulation. Yeah, you get a little seed from a pepper, eat it, and it'll give you a nice little boost. Otherwise, it doesn't do that much. And because it damages you, because it damages your insides, it damages the most subtle level, which is the prana. This is something that I don't really understand. Uh, I'm not competent enough to talk about this prana because this word prana means nothing to me. I, it, it doesn't resonate when I say prana, whatever is happening inside of me, this, this prana, or this life force, or this light, or this, this energy that's, that's flowing in my body. So, um, yeah, it damages the body, and it dam obviously it damages the body, but it damages the prana, or doesn't allow prana to flow through, and because it damages the body, it, it actually requires life energy or light in order to come and to digest it and to solve the problem that you just caused inside of yourself. So what do I see, my friends? Maybe some people here that eat consistently these types of foods, uh, negative chronic foods, um, nervous stimulating foods, or spicy foods, is that they have a little bit of a darkness to them, right? Because all the light gets diminished when you eat these foods. You look at people in the West that drink coffee, it's like you, you just sense. If a person's addicted to coffee, you look at their eyes and they're like, they're like asleep inside. Yeah? because you're trying to fight sleep with this little stimulant, you're totally throwing your system out of balance. You shouldn't drink coffee. Uh, that's just terrible, that's just scary. I, I'm just thinking about me drinking coffee and what that would do, oh my God, I can't do that. I can't do that to myself. Too scary to think about yeah, drinking coffee. So I know how my friend Carlos is gonna react. He's gonna think, oh, why? This is, you're putting restriction on some of you. Oh, you're putting restriction. I'm not putting any restrictions, okay? This is like, I'm a sensitive being. Uh, I have a sensitive body. This is not a bad thing, by the way. It's not something I was born with. It's something I cultivated. I'm becoming more and more sensitive. It's like, you have a little instrument to measure the wind, and it's some dull thing you've got a dollar ammo. Yeah, let me measure the wind. Yeah, one or two, okay? It's not, it's not uh, sufficient enough. Then you go to some scientific shop for $10,000, you can buy a, a, such a refined instrument that'll tell you literally everything that there is to know about the wind and the its patterns and whatever is inside and the quality of it, everything. Uh, that's a much more refined list. So just like this, I'm an I'm a expensive instrument. Very, very refined instrument. So also, if you think about spicy foods, let's say you have a wound and then you rub some I don't know, some chili pepper inside of your wound, that's gonna stink and burn so much compared to maybe you rubbing some um, apple juice or orange juice. Orange juice is gonna sting, but it's like, ah, 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 it's a little bit nature, nature-like. Or, I don't know, celery juice, oh, celery juice. Or whatever other food, or potatoes, or I mean, uh, or ash gourd, or watermelon, I mean anything, any kind of food. You take some lentils and you rub it into the wound, you're like, okay, probably not wise, but nothing as painful and as damaging as a uh, chili pepper. Of course, I've never experimented with this. This is why I'm thinking maybe some scientists out there, oh no, your skin actually doesn't respond to whatever uh, spice. I don't know if it does or doesn't. But um, yeah, well, maybe if you took a spicy pepper and you rubbed it on your skin, on top of the skin, I'm sure that would have a reaction. I'm not sure actually, I don't know. But I'm just putting one and two together. So maybe you would have a reaction, probably. And same thing's happening inside of your stomach. So it damages the inner lining of your stomach. And uh, yes, and if you eat a sufficiently hot enough pepper, you can send you, it can send you to the hospital, okay? That doesn't happen with fruits or vegetables, unless in some extreme case you're allergic or something, which is not practical for most people. So spicy peppers need to be avoided uh, if you've come into the human form and you're a yogi, okay? If you're on the yogi path and the spiritual path, which I know you are, if you watch up until this point in time, you need to stay away from these foods. What foods do you need to stay away from? Of course, coffee, any kind of energy drink. It's not an energy drink, it's poison, <laughs> okay? Um, the next company that lists their energy drink as poison, I'll make it, be sure to drink it. Uh, I mean, uh, buy it at least, to support their honest advertising. 
uh, number three, spicy foods, chilies, things. I think there's only one spice that is positively pranic. I'm, I'm fairly certain. Again, this is just my, I'm, I'm, I'm educatingly guessing here. Okay, it's an educated guess that it's cayenne pepper because uh, every time I've tasted cayenne pepper, yes, it, it's uh, very hot and spicy, but it, uh, I don't see it doing much inside of myself. And what else? Of course, meat, dairy, eggs, nuts. Uh, so uh, let me uh, mention this what I ate today because uh, as I was walking to the restaurant and I was thinking that they gave me milk before or some kind of milk substance on my first meal and I didn't eat it and it was probably a little bit of a mistake because I'm here in the Isha Yoga Center and I see how they're treating the cows here and I don't know where the milk comes from. Probably it comes from, I don't know, I'm hoping that it comes from ethical sources but I can't guarantee that. And um, it doesn't feel bad to eat it and I'm making justifications for myself now here that I ate milk and whatever. It's a milky kind of white thing. It was delicious. Wow, very good. Um, but the people here eat milk and it's, it, this is Sadhguru's kind of ashram. So if it's, you know, if, if he's uh, allowing this to happen and if he is, uh, if it's on this land and if it's on this property and he's okay with it, what's being sold here, well, you know, what can I do? So I ate milk just because I felt like, okay, this is, you know, this is Shiva's land. I'm in Shiva's uh, house and territory. Uh, who am I to say, no, no, I'm not gonna eat this food. I'm gonna throw it away just because my little thing. If they presented meat, they wouldn't. But if they did, I probably wouldn't eat it. I wouldn't eat it for sure. So that's the next thing I actually wanna explore is what milk does to my system. Because uh, I know that it's probably not the best, not the greatest, but I wanna know experientially and internally what, what is happening. So I'm not going out and drinking milk. That's a little bit, it's a little bit wild. But I do see the milk culture here. They're treating cows very nicely and cows work for the Isha Yoga Center. They uh, drive around people and there's lots of cows. I'm looking at them actually right now. Actually, I should show you. There's some cows. And um, yeah, so I'm a little bit experimenting here. Again, I'm a vegan by choice and only because I see the ethical concern with eating animals and eating uh, their byproducts because animals aren't treated in the most respectful way. If I knew that some cow was being milked and the cow was very happy, I wouldn't drink the cow milk. That's a little bit too repulsive. But if it was refined into cheese and something and made very nice and delicious like this was, okay, maybe, potentially. And again, I really have to explore what's, what it's doing to my system. Uh, I already know basically for certain what meat is doing and that's, uh, phew, phew, that's, that's very, very bad. That's terrible. Just the, let, let, forget about the physical aspect. Some of you think, well, it's a very physically healthy and people are calling them carnivore, which is just a, it's hilarious actually, it's hilarious. You know, I'm walking down here and there's a cow that's grazing on the grass and some people were making the argument, oh, even cows eat meat and blah. A cow wouldn't eat meat, it wouldn't. Okay, if you fell and you were rotting, no, no, the cow has better options. It'll just go eat some grass, it'll go eat some plants. That's a much saner thing to do. And sometimes, I've seen this actually on YouTube videos, that some carnivorous animals, when they see like a rodent, uh, like a little rat or something or a mouse and it's injured or it's dying or whatever, they just chomp it up, okay? But as I was looking at these cows, they probably wouldn't do that. That's a small exception, okay? That's a small exception because, again, it's the temperament of the cow, what kind of personality the cow has. If it's like, oh, this is a, a live living thing, it probably should stay away from it and not chomp it. Um, and also if it's the animal is deficient in, in various ways, maybe if it's uh, in countries that it's not, it's lacking certain minerals, then it will do that. And various other factors play into role, but that's not its nature, okay? And neither it's not our nature either to eat uh, dead animals. Basically you're eating, you know, you're eating living animals. That's what I want to say. Yes, I know it's dead and you're eating dead flesh, but buddy, it was alive like two days ago. So you, it had to be dead and you had to kill it in order for you to eat it. You're basically eating the live thing, okay? Don't do that, don't do that. That's very bad for you, very bad for your health. And I know why you're doing it, okay? Uh, it's, it's still a little bit of a struggle. Struggle is not the right word. I'm still readjusting my system to not eating meat and not uh, indulging in these little sensual pleasures. Because again, my friends, trust me, mark my words, that eating meat is a sensual pleasure. You get a little bit of a sensation. Mm, oh, 
food to taste all the dead rotting flesh, mm, uh, suffering animals, mm, uh, dead meat, a uh, dead living being that wanted to live and I just basically killed it or paid someone to kill it and I'm tasting on its flesh like a cannibal. Mm, mm, oh, very nice, very tasty, very refined. No, okay, don't do it. Stay away from it. Stay away from it, please. Stay away from it. Stay away from uh, cannibalism in all, all its forms. So you're eating is for taste pleasure, let's just be honest, okay? And if you were to go on a vegan diet in a proper proper eating manner, a lot of your uh, diet will be consistent, or just eat what naturally calls to you, okay? There's no little restrictions, I don't have restrictions. Oh, today I'm gonna eat this, tomorrow I'm gonna eat that, tomorrow I'm gonna eat fruits, today grapes, tomorrow I'm gonna eat a watermelon, today I'm gonna eat a paneer or whatever, tofu, fantastic, it's all great, okay? And if you eat this, your body's gonna readjust, readjust in a more, become more gentle, become more soft, become more flexible, become, it'll just be different. I don't want to say too many words that will trigger the really so-called, they think that they're masculine. Oh, I'm so masculine. Oh, I don't want to be soft. Buddy, buddy. Uh, soft isn't a bad thing, okay? You want your pillow to be soft? You want to have a soft heart, gentle uh, inner space? You don't want to be hard like a rock, can't perceive anything, can't perceive the world. Why? Because you're eating dead suffering animals. Okay, this is the point I want to also want to talk about. Because of the fact that you're eating these animals, yes, physical aspects are there, you're gonna hurt yourself guaranteed, physically, of course, but the emotional damage that you're causing yourself. So letting the physical uh, damage aside, because some people are going on carnivore diets, they, they claim, and their acne goes away, and their little arthritis goes away, and whatever little thing, and they, oh my God, this is the best diet. Uh, eating, suffering, and dead slaughter animals is the best thing in the world, wow. My happiness and my well-being and my health depends on other living beings suffering miserably and getting their heads cut off. Wow, I'm such a kind and compassionate human being. I'm gonna live peacefully and happily and walk this gentle planet very gently in the time of death, I'm gonna be rewarded with uh, 72 virgins. It's not gonna happen, no. okay? Impossible, or nearly impossible. Don't do it, okay? Don't be so delusional and naive. It's not gonna, it's not gonna happen, it's not gonna happen. So you're eating living beings that wanted to live and they died because of you essentially, because you're paying these people to do this. And then you're eating their bodies and you're eating the suffering emotions, mm, suffering emotions. And those suffering emotions are getting lodged into your heart, getting stored by your heart. Your heart is intelligent enough to feel everything that you're eating. And when you're eating animals that had emotions, they died with painful emotions. Every single animal that dies, dies with painful emotions. Even if you stun it, okay, the body knows what's happening and it'll uh, uh, secrete certain, it'll secrete all the things that you don't want, basically poison. So you're eating all this and you know, one or two slaughterhouses are stunning the animals. Most of them are just cutting off their heads. They don't even care about the animal. They see it as a product, like a product, like a box. Hey, you know, fold this box because it has no emotions. Similarly, in almost every single slaughterhouse, except a little conscious ones or conscious slaughterhouse. Can you imagine that? That's a contradiction. Uh, they're basically killing the animals in horrendous ways. And that's what you're eating. That's what you're eating. You're eating suffering meat, suffering. Like, wow, suffering. You're not eating meat, by the way, you're eating suffering. Is it possible to eat meat and not have the suffering aspect of it? Yes, absolutely. If you go and some horse die by accident or something, 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 or some little thing, yeah, okay, you can maybe get away with it, but still, you're ending another living being's life, life, even if you think you're stunning the animal, meaning the slaughterhouses, people. Uh, it's still not justified because the animal wants to live and you think, what, just because you want to sell a product to sell their bodies, you can just cut their heads off? No, no, well-being doesn't work like this, okay? Go vegan, go vegan, my friends, go vegan. So you're eating suffering and that's why you're suffering. That's why you're in pain. That's why you're miserable, okay? Why? Because you're eating suffering. You can't get it? I was eating suffering for a long time and I had to detox from it. And when I was detoxing, I'm like, Jesus, I mean, <laughs> I'm eating suffering animals. What am I doing with my life? Yeah, no, thank you. Okay. I don't want to experience me having to detox from these animals, pain and fear ever again in my life. And I won't. Okay. Sorry. Uh, some, some dire consequence situation that I have to eat this or I pass away. No, thanks. Okay. I have better choices. You know what this water tastes like? It's like if you put water into a, a bowl or a pot and you put it under the fire for like two minutes, yeah, let me just get it nice and warm. <laughs> That's what I just drank. Okay, I just drank slightly hot water. 
not warm but slightly slightly hot <laughs> that's India for you okay I'm not complaining by the way I'm not complaining I love this 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 I hope I stay here I hope I stay in a, in a nice conducive atmosphere like this where it's really hot let me see if the camera died because uh, the camera is right in the Sun it's gonna die any second so this video is finished it's over okay listen if you want to help yourself out if you want to help me out first and foremost donate to me in the form of a spiritual conversation consultation you can do it with me, okay what does that mean you pay me 120 American dollars USD and we will chat I'll chat with you okay I'll help you out I'll help you in your living situations whatever you're dealing with you'll be fantastic okay this is how I uh, am able to travel and do whatever I'm doing so basically you can hire me for uh, my spiritual expertise this feels a little bit wrong to say in front of the Adiyogi but hey okay uh, my life is a business and it can't be any other, any other way so I'm doing this to fund myself and to fuel myself forward in my life so donate to me um, join my discord do whatever you can to help me okay because I need your help and that's why I'm making these YouTube videos as well as do everything you can to help life in general okay my friends trust me and I'm seeing this very very clearly and experientially that the more you give to life the more you give to plants animals uh, human beings the more life gives back to you the more you get back in return okay trust me so how do I know this I went to the Adiyogi temple here and I bought a little copper water bottle a, a little cup of copper water inside and 20 rupees and you pour it over the lingam and I did that and I sat down I made an offering just water offering and then I sat down and my experience just blasted forward and I was able to experience things I've never experienced before simply because I came with a uh, an offering okay so this is how it works so I also offered um, 